Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and give me a few minutes while I explain how Blizzard got the whole concept of Warcraft expansion packs wrong. This is World of Warcraft, and this is bullshit, but what were the series of mistakes made on the journey between God Tier and God Awful? Was it Pandas? Was it Group Finder? Was it Flying Mounts? Was it Level Boost? Sure, all these things had a negative effect on the game, but one of the largest problems with World of Warcraft is the way Blizzard handle expansion packs. This and this are not the same type of game, so expansion packs should be handled differently too. Getting the main game and then bolting on new content onto the side works if it's an RTS game, but for an MMO, it's stupid. Blizzard just looked at the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor and thought, what the f*** is this? They ignored and abandoned all the locations and items from the original that they could, and then split the player base into two groups. Those who paid out for the new expansion are now here, and those that did not, or a leveling an orc, play here. Everything that was gained here is now totally obsolete here. What the Burning Crusade did was not expand the game by making it bigger, what it actually did was now cut the game into essentially two games. Before we look at what they could have done differently to actually avoid all of this, let's look at the other totally shitty thing that Blizzard did with the expansion. They made you pay for it. When you actually give it some thought, that's some greedy bullshit right there. So around the time of the Burning Crusade launch, the game had about 7.5 million active subscribers. So so if we look on Wayback Machine, the cost of a sub was between $15 and $30 a month. But let's be super nice here and assume each of those 7.5 million people were actually buying cut price game time cards and actually paying just $10 a month. $10 times 7.5 million people equals $75 million a month in subscriptions alone. Forget about the money made from people having to buy the game in the first place or paid character services like Realm Moving. Just from people subscribing to the game, Blizzard was pulling in $75 million a month. Also, we know how much it cost to keep Warcraft running thanks to a 2008 Wired article, and that was $4.1 million dollars a month for everything the hardware the warehousing staff costs everything so blizzard were walking away with a cool 70 million dollars a month yet they still wanted you to pay for content that they were planning for the fucking vanilla game remember stuff like the caverns of time was done the black morass dungeon was already in vanilla and they planned the dark portal and outland before the base game even launched another one of the core tenets about world of warcraft when it it comes to what we might refer to as our elder game or end game is that while we really are trying to do a really interesting and deep raid game for guilds that want to take on dragons and these powerful creatures we didn't want our elder game to only be about raid content we also are trying to provide high end game pvp content for players and we also wanted to have our world have a sense of community and, and have some dynamic things that change throughout the world in the raid game, a lot of these creatures, as you progress through them, will not even be available when, when the game first goes live. Like one example that we've talked about is the concept of Outland, which we introduced in Warcraft 3. And Outland is this area that actually is on another kind of uh, planet that is beyond the Dark Portal. And the Dark Portal has been closed for many years players on each of the different realms will have to find out how to open the dark portal again and only once the players of each of these realms open that dark portal will people be able to go through it and find all the uber creatures beyond that what sort of greedy cunts do this? I don't like Call of Duty, but you buy the game, you buy the DLC, and then you just play. There's no subscription. Fortnite is not my sort of game, but that's free to own, free to play. The new seasons, models, and playable content is free. You just pay for the skins. Street Fighter, Dreams on PS4, GTA, Fall Guys. No one asks for money at every single possible opportunity. You usually get something free. You either get the game free, or you get to play for free, or you get the 
updates for free. Not with Blizzard. They asked money for the game, money for the subscription, and money for the updates. Blizzard took the fucking piss. I've gone off track a bit, but the cost really does piss me off. So not only did Blizzard want money for an expansion, but each expansion keeps doing the same thing. Introduces a new area to play in and makes everything before it obsolete. It doesn't expand the size of your playground. It just moves you to a new one. So what could they have done differently? Little changes can have gigantic consequences. Atish, great star for the Guardian. You got this from AQ40 and Nax. Outside of its stats, it can also teleport you to just outside Karazhan. Burning Crusade comes out, this is obsolete. But if you'd changed the staff so it teleported you to that inaccessible ledge at Karazhan and that, that door took you to a separate level 70 Karazhan secret boss, which drops a really great item. Well now, level 70 characters have a reason to be in vanilla raids. They want to run AQ40 and Max, but now it's easier for them so they can offer boosts to level 60 players. Lower level and higher level characters actually interact with each other and those high-end vanilla areas are no longer empty just because everyone wants to be in the outland. Just a little change to one item, including just one little extra boss and all of a sudden you've given new life to the content instead of ignoring it. But you could go much further. Blizzard could have incorporated professions better. What if some of the Alliance outposts in Hellfire wanted you to bring them iron and thorium armor in exchange for reputation points? You would give people reasons to visit the old zones so they weren't just empty. Plus, you wouldn't be making early profession levels gold sinks because as the new expansion comes out, the older content becomes redundant. But it didn't have to be if Blizzard just tried to incorporate it into the new content. What about an Outland faction that sold you items based on how many other factions you had exalted level with? Another way to add gameplay value to older content. But then you could do something even more drastic and add leveling hubs to the old world. What if between levels 64 and 68, the leveling hubs were in some of the unused areas of the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor, rather than just the Outland? There are so many ways Blizzard could have incorporated vanilla content into the new expansions, but they never did this. Instead of making the base game bigger, they just kept sticking new bits on the side until it became the utter mess we know today. Now, all these thoughts I've had about how Blizzard totally cocked up expansion packs wasn't just a random thought I had one day. This all came about because I actually played on a Warcraft server where this concept of expanding the base game has actually been done, where they've taken the vanilla world of Warcraft and added more into it, but did it in a style which felt like how Blizzard of 2005 would have done it. Now I'm going to talk about a Warcraft private server, but not just some crappy custom content server where you get gigantic NPC selling bags or lines of vendors in the starting zone that kick you out at the very start of the game. No, this is a server that has produced a version of vanilla that feels really legitimate. Like I say, it feels like how 2005 Blizzard would have expanded the game and not just some cheap fan job. This is a tastefully done, expanded vanilla experience. It added so much that it really felt like the classic game had been expanded upon. This server is Turtle Well, and from the first extra quest offered to you by Marshall McBride, you can tell you are in for something special. So this new quest has just some common low level items as its rewards. It's very much in line with other quests from that level, but it asks you to return to the Echo Ridge to kill a mob called Snuffle Snout, who's a kobold. Right away, the beauty of this quest is that had you never done this area before, you'd never know that this was a custom quest, as it fits right in with everything else. All those other normal quests are here too, nothing's been removed, so you kill the normal mobs for the same quest you'd normally do, but as you go, you will find new NPCs with new well-written stories that will offer brand new quests, like this one, where the lady wants you to throw a special coin into the Stormwind Fountain. So you'd go to do that, but as you pass through Goldshear, you'll notice more changes. First of all, I met someone who was playing as a High Elf, which is now a new alliance race. Outside of here, we have new buildings in Goldshear, which house new NPCs offering new quests. So many new quests, in fact, that at one point I was walking around with the forest and my quest log was nothing but brand new quests. Passing back through Goldshear, I found that I could actually rent horses now. Their speed is based on my riding skill, so you can't just zip to anywhere you like at level 5, but it's a nice thing to have. I nipped into the inn quick and a gnome from the Everlook Science Squad asked me to test out their wormhole generator. I did, and I ended up in Stormwind. This was nice, as not only did I see new NPCs 
place selling basic food and drinks, but a new Quest Wanted board. Better than that, I could finally throw the coin into the fountain for the quest that I got earlier. A little trip around Stormwind, and I found that as High Elves had become an alliance race, they had taken over what used to be Cutthroat Alley and turned it into Little Silver Moon. This was really cool to see, and it was just such a nice touch. All this, and I wasn't even level 10 yet, but Warcraft had felt refreshed. Old areas had been given new life. There were new features, but they applied to the old world. There was new content to do, but it felt like it was built on top of what the game already was, rather than just stuck on the side of it. This really is an expansion to World of Warcraft, because the size of your playground had now increased, and you've now got more toys. This is how Blizzard should have done expansions all along. Turtle Well has absolutely nailed this. It's fantastic. And just so you know, Turtle Well offered me some money to make a video to promote their server. So before accepting any offer I had, I just had a quick playthrough to see what it was about. I then contacted them and told them to keep their money. I didn't want it. I wanted to make this video because I think this is a brilliant server. I didn't want some sort of business deal to water that message down. Anyway, that's it. Have a 